Welcome everyone to the 107th episode of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. I am your host, Triple J. Joining me is my co-host, Dr. Games 101. What's going on, guys? We some interesting times we're going through right now as gamers. Yep. Uh, so we got about seven stories uh, So uh, that came out over the last couple of weeks. So we're going to jump into them and go over the latest news in gaming. You ready to start? Oh, yeah. Especially with Concord and all. Man, it's crazy out there. Okay, so the first story uh, to come up. Uh, so just one, just one moment. Yeah, sure. Because I got the first three stories up. Concord's going to be at the end. All right, first story: Artist to Rockstar after seventy five hundred dollar offer to use their song in GTA Six. Go f yourself. Did that rapper that? Uh, Copyright claim? Do you get get offered to to be on Grand Theft Auto Six? That was my that was my first thought when I read this headline. <laughs> uh, Martin Ware of Heaven Seventeen and Rockstar's team made a pathetic offer for his 1983 song Temptation. An English artist has reacted to a purported offer from Rockstar Games to include his band Heaven's. 17's 1983 song Temptation and Grand Theft Auto 6 saying the offer of $7,500 was extremely low. Martin Ware, 68, said on social media that he was recently contacted by his team to discuss an offer from Rockstar Games about the possibility of putting Temptation in Grand Theft Auto 6. Ware said he was naturally excited about the immense wealth that was about to head my way. That is, until he saw the actual offer, $7,500. Ware said uh, this amount would have covered a buyout of any future royalties from the game forever. Ware went on to incorrectly state that Grand Theft Auto 6 has already grossed $8.6 billion, and that the and he believes he was lowballed because having the song in GTA 6 could generate exposure for the song. Where's response? Go F yourself, he said about the offer. To be mm-hmm. sure, Grand Theft Auto 6 is um, not yet released and th- thus has generated nothing. Where is likely referring to Grand Theft Auto 5, which is among the most successful games of all time, with more than 250 million copies sold, and it cleared a, uh, $1 billion in revenue after just 72 hours back in t- 2013. GTA 6 is expected to be a juggernaut as well in terms of units sold and revenue. Ware's social media post went viral, and he later offered a number of clarifications. Starting off, the $7,500 offer was for his share alone. The song has three credited writers, and they would also receive $7,500 for a total of at least $22,500. The other songwriters are Glenn Gregory and Jan Craig Marsh. When labeled the off- Ware labeled the offer pathetic, he said he attempted to engage in a counteroffer, though his publisher, but Rockstar's team refused, he said. He said he had been able to negotiate he would have asked for £75,000 or no advance payment in exchange for a reasonable royalty on the number of GTA 6 copies sold. He also pointed out that the exposure angle wouldn't have been agreeable to him either, as even one million extra streams would have generated only $1,000 each for the three uh, songwriters. GameSpot has contacted Rockstar Games in an attempt to get more detail on this matter. GTA 6 is set for release in fall of 2025. Every major Rockstar release, game release over the past 10 years has been delayed past its original date. So let's get... Uh, some comments and Hell Without Sin goes he's been in the music in music industry for nearly 50 years and has been licensing his music during that time he sure hells knows what the typical rate he should be getting is and whether or not he'll be ripped off uh, but just his returns goes $7,500 doesn't seem low for a 1983 song no one knows about to be honest. Some people see GTA and think they earn millions for minimum effort. If it was a hit song made by a popular artist, okay, it seemed low. But an old song very little people heard of? Come on. Edit. Went to YouTube and heard the song. My God, it's bad. $7,500 was generous for this poo-poo. And 
equally goes, you may be too young, and personally, so am I. And I'm certainly not one of the fans or of the genre, but there's nothing unknown about these guys or the long-term influence. $7,500 after taxes is like $5,000 for permanently relinquishing any rights to profit from the game while it uses their work. No artist with a 40-year career who has worked with everyone from Tina Turner to Sting to Talking Heads would consider that anything but an absurd insult, and they should. You are correct in one thing, though. Definitely not a fan of the song. LOL. Hmm. So what do you think of this song, uh, what, this, what this songwriter said about Grand Theft Auto 6? What was the name of that, uh, uh, that artist again? Or the musician? Martin, Martin Ware for Temptation. The fuck is that guy's name? What the? <laughs> I never heard that guy before. I heard of the Temptations, that was just from the nineteen sixties with them singing an R and B, you know, blues Yeah, I'm and not all. I'm not talking about the band Temptations. I'm talking about the song Temptation sing singular use. Yeah, unfortunately I don't know much about that song at all. So Well, it's obviously not not many people are are uh defending it. Everyone says yeah, even if the offer was low it was. It's a bad song. So I just wonder why. G why is GTA Six setting a song from nineteen eighties? Isn't GTA Six and the numbered entry supposed to take place in modern times? Yeah, but also got to consider the fact that there's a lot of throwback stations in current day. Like you know, even uh, stations here in New York City where they have like a, a rock, um, a rock station. I've got the name of the the FM radio station, but they were like playing some some as old as Lincoln Park and. Be like 182 now, as I said, the oldies, surprisingly. So it's uh, because back 20 years ago, if not 10 years ago, when I, when I was listening to that, these rock stations, these old rock stations, we're talking about like you know, Queen and um, you know, uh, ACDC and you know, those type of guys playing on the radio. Now it's all of a sudden like 182, like I mentioned, so it's kind of like you know, those were meant to be put in GTA games, especially the GTA 6, you know, especially Queen of all, of all, get um. um genres and also its tracks too they have how many number one hits Queen is themselves so it, it put those into the game but this $7,500 offer of this certain song which I don't even know anything about called Temptation is kind of like you know what the fuck like you, you're glad to get 5000 bucks, $7,000 for that kind of uh, offering I would take that too and that was going to be for each songwriter because there were three credited writers to that song I see wow yeah. yeah. So. Now, if it was now if it was guys like Tina Turner, uh, Elton John, uh, even um, uh, what's it called, uh, Zap and Roger before they one the the duo members passed away and all that's that's those are valuable you know musicians that should get lots more money than, than just seven thousand dollars. So it's all about the value, popularity, timing, and also how long the the, the song came out and stuff. So it's. It's, it's feasible, it's plausible for to give them that kind of money. Yeah, but I'm just wondering, is Martin Ware really making that much money now, or is he living off the money he made when he was in, you know, 40 years ago, 30 years ago? Yeah, plus also, I never heard this guy before. I mean, for us, like, you know, Stevie Ray or something like that, that's one thing, but... You no, know, it's sorry, man. I can't. I can't defend you too much on this matter. I'm like, I, most of the GTA um, players don't really listen to the radio to begin with. I saw like a few people listen to the radio on, on a constant basis, like you and I, Triple J, with, with Chatterbox and GTA Three or Vi yeah. VCPR in uh, Vice City yeah. or San Andreas VCPR. So it's kind of like you know, what's next for um, the GTA Six? Going to be VCPR number two or whatever it's called so and also so that's that's one of our as was called talk radio now you gotta find other communities and groups and also players that listen to your old stuff and i for one when i'm all when that in group group sessions of playing gta i'll play by myself these stations on gta 5 called uh planet fm or something like that where it's a bounce fm something where it involves a lot of uh disco music and stuff like that kind of like you know uh, the Whisperers, or uh, the the song Joystick, which is the um, which is called the Whisperers. I believe it's also called the Dows Band, the Temptations, you name it. So like uh, it's, you know, that's my kind of music. Let's listen to while playing GTA Five or other um, GTA games. So yeah, so I mean, it's it's just ridiculous uh, that um, it's I mean it's just ridiculous. Uh, 
that he, you know, this guy, he was contacted by Rockstar. He saw dollar signs. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, he wanted 10 times what they were offering. <laughs> uh, and uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Because uh, he said, because it was put in English pounds. So I, uh, I want to see if we can get like in, in U.S. dollars. Because uh, English pounds are more valuable than U.S. dollars, I hear, in today's time. Okay, pound one pound to US dollar. So seventy uh, this is why I hate when you make Yahoo you search your homepage and perhaps you should use Google. Yeah. Okay, so seventy five thousand pounds. I can't. Okay, seventy-five thousand pounds is nearly a hundred thousand mm. dollars. I put seventy-five thousand pounds sterling, and it's ninety-nine thousand eight hundred seventy-seven dollars and forty-three cents. Okay, if you thought you were getting that much, Martin, whatever your name is, you're delusional. Yeah. No, no. one. I mean, what you think Grand Theft Auto is going to break the bank just just for you? You don't know Michael Jackson, that's for certain. I don't even think they would pay Michael Jackson that much. <laughs> I mean, wow, a hundred he thought he was gonna get nearly a hundred thousand dollars just for himself. This he's not like saying, Oh, this would go to the band or this would go to all the songwriters. No, he thought he was gonna get a hundred thousand dollars himself. <laughs> or just about. And he thinks that's a fair uh, offer. I mean, we're not saying that you're nobody, but to most people in today's world, you're nobody. You know, it's uh, it sucks, man. <laughs> yeah. So enjoy, enjoy, uh, enjoy turning the money back. I'm sure you got plenty of uh, avenues for making cash. Oh yeah, perhaps working at McDonald's or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ready to move on? That's your automation. Yeah, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> All right. Next. New Carmen San Diego game has you play as Master Thief for first time. It will be the franchise's first video game in nearly 10 years. Carmen San Diego is back in her first game since 2015's Carmen San Diego Returns. For the first time in franchise history, you'll play as the Super Thief instead of those pursuing her in a reimagined new game simply called Carmen San Diego. However, San Diego has given up a life of crime and works as a counter thief, tracking down. V-I-L-E operatives across the globe. The game takes style and plot cues from the Netflix animated show which started in 2019. As for the gameplay, you'll control San Diego herself utilizing gadgets like a hang glider and grappling hook to get around. Common San Diego appears to have more 3D platformer flavor than the original games. The trailer shows San Diego pickpocketing a man so there may be some stealth elements. As you obtain clues and information, you can identify and capture VILE operatives. How much edutainment will be a part of the game remains to be seen. However, you will explore many locations across the world. Conform, confirmed locals include Iceland, Ghana, Egypt, India, Japan, and Australia. Mm. Common San Diego has no release yet, date yet, just a window of quarter one, 2025. When it drops, it will release on PC, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and mobile. It will be included on the Netflix app. You can wishlist the game now. There's no nothing to no one no comments were made about this game. Have you ever played any of the Common San Diego games in the past? Unfortunately, I don't remember exactly. It's been over 25, 30 years now. I was a six years old when that came out on TV publicly. And during that time, there were games for it on the PC and all, but, you know, my school, and also myself, we didn't have the money for it or the know-how to get the that kind of, those kind of games were that rare, in my opinion, or my perspective at the time. Because back then, games were like, you know, not, not saying that, you know, you cannot find them anywhere or nowhere, it's just that the information is so little to some parts of the United States, depends on where you live, to find these games, I and mean, where to find these games already. Uh, personally, myself, I did um, watch the Carmen San Diego TV show a few times. It was not so bad. It makes you think so every 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 now and then, whatever. Um, yeah, man, it's. Uh, 
I don't mind buying, try, try to escape for the first time um, of this particular Carmen San Diego game. So, yeah, I do. I do remember that song from the '90s. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Carmen uh, San Diego. <laughs> so I do remember that, but that's like all I remember. I do remember. I do remember the games not being that good. They were all point and click, if I remember correctly. Pretty much, that's about it. At this rate, so it's it was like the old Sherlock Holmes games, um, mm. which you know I was not a fan of point and click games. Uh, like I uh, like I said uh, in elementary school, the game of the the game everyone wanted to play was Oregon Trail. Um, oh yeah, that group- was a popular. Yeah, and they had many versions. Uh, the school had one version. I had a different version at home. Um, so there was that. Uh, and then in junior high and high school, it was mostly what games you could get on PC. Um, if you could get any. Uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, this is... So, I mean, while this is interesting, I mean, I didn't even know they had another Common San Diego uh, game back before this one. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But it sounds interesting. Um, I mean, now she's doing... Now she's on the opposite side, which I guess they had to do to make it... But, I mean, I guess we couldn't have a villain be the lead role, so... Oh, yeah, because if I remember correctly... Carmen San Diego was the was the antagonist of most of the yep. horror games. So, yeah, I don't like that that they changed her to be a good guy, and now she's like steal like she's a Robin Hood, or yeah, like a Robin Hood type of character stealing a, for people who I guess have been wronged or something. It's or be a vigilante at least, like like Batman. Yeah. I mean, uh, they do. Uh, so, I mean, it's gonna. It's kind of. It's it's kind of interesting, but some things make me wonder. Well, wait a minute. We're talking about today, in video games, not, not, not ten years ago when people still had common sense uh, in the gaming <laughs> industry. Uh, you know, what if what if the common San Diego games turns out to be something like Suicide Squad? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that would be something. <laughs> It it be it wouldn't be anything good, <laughs> that's for sure. And it, it'd be less educational, and more action packed instead, most likely. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, and also, how much education is going to be in there? What are they going to actually teach? Because, like the common San Diego games, if as I remember, what I what little I do remember, they were like mostly about geography and stuff, weren't they? Yeah, about like uh, like what what part of what world you're in. How to get there? It's like Ninja's World in uh, those um, PC games in the schools back in the day. Except for Ninja's World, is more, you know, less popular than Carbon City Angels. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's supposed to come out sometime next year. Begin uh, the first quarter of next year. Um, as more info comes out about it, we'll definitely cover it. Oh yes, indeed. Any anything else to add, or ready to move on? We can move on now. Okay. Next. PS5 Pro revealed for $700 launches in November. Sony has finally unveiled its more powerful PS5, but the price is higher than some imagined it would be. Looks like I'm going to have to take it out bank loan. <laughs> Following plenty of speculation, tasks, and reports, Sony has officially announced that PlayStation 5 Pro. Why? <laughs> revealed by PlayStation system architect Mark Gen- Jenny during Sony's PlayStation 5 technical presentation, the PS5 Pro is said to be close to including the power of the PS5. The system costs $700 American and is not equipped with a disk drive, nor does it come with a vertical stand, which is sold separately. Pre-orders open on September 26. The system includes 2 terabyte SSD, an increase from the standard PS5, as well as the usual inclusions of a DualSense wireless controller, and a copy of Astro's Playroom, not to be confused with the just-launched Astrobot. It launches on November 7th through PlayStation Direct and a variety of retailers around the world. uh, Cerny called it the most powerful console Sony has ever made in terms of the design. It looks similar to the existing PS5, and it's the same height, but with a racing stripe, like cut out on the side, but it's the internals where the differences are more pronounced, as Sony has upgraded the GPU to offer significantly more power. 
Cerny spoke about the common choice of performance mode to prioritize frame rate versus fidelity mode to pr prioritize visual quality and how performance mode is chosen roughly 75% of the time. The goal with PS5 Pro is to eliminate the need to make that choice. Thanks to the upgraded GPU and AI upscaling techniques called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which sounds similar to things like NVIDIA's uh, DLSS, which can offer major enhancements in PC games and improved ray tracing effects. Here are the technical details of the PS5 Pro as written by PlayStation. Upgraded GPU. With PS5 Pro, we are upgrading to a GPU that has 67% more computer units than the current PS5 console and 28% faster memory. Overall, this enables up to 45% faster rendering for gameplay, making the experience much smoother. Advanced Ray Tracing. We've added even more powerful ray tracing that provides more dynamic reflection and refraction of light. This allows the rays to be cast at double and at times triple the speeds of the current PS5 console. AI-driven upscaling. We're also introducing PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, an AI-driven upscaling that uses a machine learning-based technology to provide super sharp image clarity by adding an extraordinary amount of detail. While the PS5 Pro does not come with a disk drive, it is compatible with the $80 disk drive add-on. Some of the games that will take advantage of the PS5 Pro features include Alan Wake 2, Assassin's Creed Shadows, Demon Souls, Dragon Dogma 2, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Grand Turismo 7, Hogwarts Legacy, Horizon Forbidden West, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, The Crew Motorfest, The First Descendant, and The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. These games will be designated with the wording PS5 Pro Enhanced. The PS5 Pro also include a feature called PS5 Pro Game Boost, which enhances compatible PS4 games for PS5 Pro. In total, more than 8,500 games are compatible, Sony said. Supported PS4 and PS5 games may see improved performance, while some PS4 games will run at higher resolutions. Other supported features include Wi-Fi 7, uh, VRR, and 8K output. All three of those will require other compatible hardware in order to leverage. The PS5 Pro is compatible with existing PlayStation peripheral, including PSVR 2, PlayStation Portal, DualSense Edge, Pulse Elite, Pulse Explorer, and the Access Controller. Our PS5 journey would not be possible without the millions of players that have supported us through the years and have shared us with their love of gaming. Whichever console option players choose, whether it's PS5 or PS5 Pro, we wish to bring everyone the very best gaming experience that fits their needs, Sony said. The PS5's Pro's existence is in keeping with tradition for Sony as the company previously launched a Pro version of the PS4 in November of 2016. The PS4 Pro launched at $400 when the PS4 was $300. This time around, the price gap between the consoles is bigger as the PS5 goes for $500 and the PS5 Pro will sell for $700. You can see how that $700 price compares to past consoles when adjusting for inflation. Prior to the announcement, Hideo Kojima's assistant uploaded a photo of the developer playing Death Stranding 2 with what looks like to be a device hidden under a cloak. Many believe this was a developer's version of the PS5 Pro. The announcement of the PS5 Pro comes not long after Sony had a success story with the launch of the uh, critically claimed um, Astrobot. This game helped improve the vibe surrounding Sony following the abrupt shutdown of Concord. Okay, so let's look at some comments. I, I, I wonder who's going to be meaner, me or the comments. <laughs> uh, old Dad Gamer goes, I'm just wondering who this is for. If you're brand new to PlayStation and there's a 500 option and a 700 option, you'll likely go cheaper because you're new and probably don't know a, a teraflop from a floppy disk. <laughs> if you have a PS5, that's doing just fine. Are these improvements really worth it? If you really do care about what that kind of speed and upscaling, you likely already have a PC. I'm sure it's a cool box that plays games. Well, but I'm at a loss to who Sony intended customers for this. Uh, Cyrus Eraser goes, I have a PC but want to play on a larger TV in my basement, so this would apply to me. You're an idiot. The $700 price tag is bullshit, though, considering it doesn't even come with a stand or disk drive. And Bassman goes, then hook up your PC to your TV in the basement. 
and goes uh, sideways eraser goes it I use it upstairs it's not gonna tra- I'm not gonna transplant it back and forth every night mm. and HJ uh, Roman said in response that's right some people don't get the concept of a game console it's a device to put in your TV room that is not necessarily the same room where you have your computer I'm not talking about handheld computers or laptops so dr. games 101 uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first I have to say this though at first I can't go with um, buying the seven dollar console that's if and only if if I'm desperate as like a seven, eight, nine, ten year old gamer and ask my mommy and daddy for it, but that's about it. But as an adult gamer now, you know, my f- almost being forty, uh, and my budget is very strict. You know, I I'm not gonna sacrifice seven hundred dollars on my paycheck just to play this damn thing. I mean, it's stupid at first, but it's only seven hundred dollars for the console. You if you want a disc drive, that's an eighty dollars. If you want the stand, that's like twenty dollars. So that's a hundred dollars more. Plus tax, maybe uh, you get free shipping with a New York City uh, fee. I forgot about that, too. They've been doing that for the last several months now on DoorDash and other outlets where you want to buy stuff online and stuff. So Amazon's doing the same thing, too. So that's at least about a good five bucks and not ten bucks. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I just have to say, uh, let, me try to, let me try to put this in a way that I can make my point clearly. Go ahead. The PS5 is already worthless. <laughs> there is no reason to have a PS5 if you have a PS4. <laughs> what's the what? Spider-Man 2 is that I think that's the only game that's compatible on PS5 that's not compatible on PS4 that people care about. Right. So you make another console when new no new games are coming out exclusive for PlayStation that's going to be even more expensive. Um, what? Who's gonna get this? If you got the money, you probably. Uh, I mean, most like I said, uh, they broke it down clearly in the comments. Kids, they're gonna have to ask their parents for it. Parents, if they're smart, they're not gonna get it because they're gonna see all the stuff that has to be bought with it, and they're gonna be like, "Screw this." Mm-hmm. Unless the parents are very, very well off, and even then, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very few people who actually get it. Um, so kids not gonna get it. Teenagers not gonna get it. Um, if you care really about the graphics, you you probably play on a PC anyway. If you have, if you're a console gamer, are you really? If you didn't get burned with the PS5, why would you? If you got burned with the PS5, because like I said, there's like 18 games, maybe even less, that are exclusive to PlayStation 5. Why would you uh, spend more money on a PS5 Pro? I mean, it's I. <sighs> yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Because well, I rather I rather spend a thousand dollars for a new PC now because now my computer is 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 croaked now because uh, I use my laptop and all. So now I don't need a thousand dollar PC. So screw the PS5 now, and even the Xbox Series, especially the newest one that's coming out in fall, like around next month or two. That's, that's like yep. at least seven hundred dollars right there. The two terabyte edition. Yeah, it's no yeah, disc it's drive. Like six hundred dollars for the two terabyte one. I think, I think it's close with a disc drive or, or no disc drive. I forgot which one. But you it said was, it was. You said the, um, I know the two were the two cheaper Xboxes had no disc drive. You said you heard the third one, the most expensive, also didn't have a disc drive. It, either that or it has the different um, versions. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I should look into that further, though. Sorry about that, guys. But I found out late, earlier, though, um, that the most likely comes with a disk drive, the 2 terabyte edition, that's coming out next month. But still, I mean, it's kind of... I mean, like I said, Xbox got its own problems. Give them a white flag and tell them to call it a day. Um, <laughs> and they could just wave the white flag like they, ha- like, like they have um, been doing. So I mean, it's but I mean, like I said, the PS5 was a waste of money when I saw the l- extremely low list of games that are needed to play a PS5, and now they're making a Pro version. Mm-hmm. If you buy the PS5 Pro and you can afford it, you're just you're just you're just in you're just uh, you're giving the wrong message to these companies because this is this is shit that's got to stop. I mean. 
like I said, the PS5 was pretty pretty much uh, not even needed, and now they're making a pro. Now no here... new games, no new games mentioned that I know of. It's just all about the PS5 Pro, where you can play older games for better quality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with and really, how many people are gonna men- are gonna realize that quality? Well, if you play on a PS5 already and you play it to the PS5 Pro, you you have to have like screenshots up side by side to to notice the differences. It's like in those old highlight magazines from the '90s where they show you two pictures that are similar, but you had to circle the differences in one of the pictures. Yeah. That's what these graphics are like. It's going to look pretty much the same to the naked eye unless you have, like, screenshots up side by side or if you're really, like, you know, looking through with, like, a fine-tooth comb to notice the differences. And that's what you're banking on? That's what that's what's supposed to drive people? And we're not getting any new games for the for the Sony, or at least a group of games for Sony's system until the earliest twenty mid twenty twenty five at the earliest April twenty twenty five at the earliest. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so get a PS five Pro, and you can continue to play games that are already out. No new games until at the earliest twenty twenty five, and they're selling it right April this second. April twenty twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> Six months from now, pretty much. Not even, at least, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I just don't understand the point. And I really don't... I mean, it's... I, I understand the point. It's greed. Just pure greed. What uh, they should have done, if I can say this to Triple J, what they should have done is push that date, later date of the PS5 Pro until like March or if not May of 2025 or somewhere around that. And then you can make sales on it. But no, they're yeah. wait till the holiday. It's all about the Christmas season and about like when is the best time to sell it properly. But I mean, it's just I don't. I honestly, I just I really hope people are not dumb enough to run out there and be like, "Ooh, I gotta get this." Yeah. Why? <laughs> most of us adult gamers could agree that this is still a bit too much for us to buy a uh, hundred dollars worth. It's best best to buy a thousand on PC at this rate that I build. As part of this um, company that I was with, uh, not company, but the well, the company, yes, but it's just that they have like a built for software feature where you get the AMD um, graphics card and then the Nvidia drive and such and such, and it all adds up to like a thousand seventy five dollars with shipping and handling. That's about it. So it's uh, you know, that's so that's three hundred dollars more I can spend for that kind of quality, something of that yeah. sort. Yeah. So I mean, the PS Five Pro. Um... It's just, it's. I mean, I mean, they were showing. Uh, they had to use old games to show it off because they had nothing new to come out to show it, to show its capabilities. Yeah, it's not like the PS4 Pro back during the twenty was it twenty seventeen, twenty sixteen when they had games coming out like Knack and Jack and Dexter maybe and have um, what's it called um, Ratchet and Clank now back in the PS4 era. Like yeah. those, yeah, they kept coming out with games one after another from as early as 2013 till 2018, 2019. And then all of a sudden, then PS5 came out. Now it's like they delayed because of that pandemic and all. So whatever happened during that pandemic kind of screwed up the, the timing of both Sony and PlayStation to release these consoles, whether they're high quality or not. That's not the problem. Problem is timing and also when games will come out for those systems. That is it. You know? Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, I mean, well, then again, Sony and then, then Sony announced they weren't going to have any first-party games till April 2025 at the earliest. Mm-hmm. But then again, why, why does Sony need to make games? Microsoft's making them, and Microsoft's um, in the same similar position too, where they only make with Sony games and Redfall and Starfield, possibly their ace in the hole. Now, all of a sudden, by 2025, we're going to have games like the South of Midnight for the Xbox Series and all in. Whatever that game, uh, other games coming out, where there was also the Potato Head or Mr. Potato Head version of a uh, Double Seven missions and stuff like that. So Jeff Kelly helped out, you know, the the company of Xbox to, to push their future projects. But that's like what, at least as of June, that's like eight months in advance. That's about it. So it's uh, weird, weird for them to do that. But they did it anyway. So it's. Uh, it's going to f- screw up their sales in the long run. More, more, yeah. more power to them. He's sucky, the uh, Sony and Microsoft. 
<laughs> and I thought Redfield was I thought Redfall was actually going to be good. I have to admit on you know, this is before the game came out. Right. Uh, I thought concept wise it was going to be good. I but I knew Starfield was going to suck. I used to be boring. Yeah. And it's just like it's it's kind of like those games with the Titanic of the Xbox yeah. um, brand. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can really call it the brand. I mean, it's kind of like they're putting all the information, they're all putting all their effort in the Game Pass, and then just status quo for the rest, I guess. Indeed. Anything else to add, or ready to move on? Um, I just want to say though that uh, you know. Phil Spencer of X, head of Xbox and that president of Xbox as well, you know they're not doing too well to try to to compete better towards Sony in my opinion for them to overcome these um these stupid not stupid console wars but the, the redundancy of console wars meaning that they're not putting no value to these console war war affairs you know in my opinion because us us older games we're into the console war still until. We pass away. That's about it. But the younger young gamers are not into the console wars like like, like we are. Uh, also, the gamers. So, you know, once till we pass away, that's it. You know, the the worthiness of having a console of any kind, of any brand or any company, will be irrelevant because most of the young gamers are into like the what's that game compatible to my other systems that I can play anywhere or any time on. That's all it is right now. Is play anywhere, anytime. So this this is the last time they're gonna be um, putting these good consoles out. Supposed to be good consoles out, but that's about it. And then after this generation, it's gonna be like you know what's next for the newer gamers to to, to to buy. You know, it's it is what it is now. So that's all I had to say. You know, I just have to say, and I'm just gonna continue saying. You know, at first I didn't want to say it because uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to drill the point home, but I think I want to drill that point home now. This is why it's better to go back to retro. Yeah. And when I say retro, I mean PS3, 360, Wii U, or further back. Even though some... Well, no, the PS3 and 360 are like 20 years old at this point, so you could call them retro. Pretty much, yeah. Um, Like I said, most of the time I, sp- I have my Xbox One on, yeah, but I'm watching YouTube because I don't have any other way to watch YouTube on my TV because it's not a smart TV. Oh yeah, my TV is a smart TV as well, but it's better with the Xbox because it's uh, it's interactive. Being that like you you can go between like you know SoundCloud or with um, gaming and stuff like that at the same time, etc. etc. Netflix as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so any so ready to move on? Yeah, I'm ready to move on. All right. Next. Xbox cut 650 more gaming jobs, but no studios closed or games canceled. Microsoft enacts another round of heavy cuts. They must be doing so well. (laughs) Microsoft has implemented another round of heavy cuts to its Xbox gaming team following the acquisition of Activision Blizzard. In this latest round of layoffs, Microsoft is eliminating about 650 positions from its gaming team, but no additional studios have closed, and no other games are canceled as a result of the move, which Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer confirmed on September 12th. In January, Microsoft cut 1,900 gaming positions, bringing the number of cuts to the company to about 2,550 since the $75.4 billion dollar deal to buy Activision Blizzard closed in October of 2023. In a memo to staff obtained by IGN, Spencer said the cuts come as part of Microsoft's effort to align the company's post-acquisition team structure and managing our business. The approximately 500 no, the approximately 650 layoffs from Microsoft Gaming mostly impact the corporate and supporting functions of the business, the company said. Affected staffers in the U.S. are getting severance, extended health care, and outplacement services. Packages for those outside of the U.S. are available too and vary by location. With these changes, our corporate and supporting teams and resources are aligned for sustainable future growth and can better support our studio teams and business units with programs and resources that can scale to meet their needs, Spencer said. Separately, as part of running the business, there are some impacts to other teams as they adapt to shifting priorities and manage the life cycle and performance of games. No games, device, or experiences are being canceled, and no studios are being closed as part of the adjustment today. 
In March, Spencer said the initial round of job cuts announced in January were necessary to help Xbox become a profitable business following the blockbuster buyout of Activision Blizzard. Time out, time out, time out. <laughs> if, if, if Activision Blizzard was going to be such a huge expense that was going to impact people's jobs, why go through with the merger? <laughs> Bill Spencer, are, you, are there any working brain cells left in your head, you idiot? <laughs> you buy this, you buy Activision Blizzard, knowing you're going to cancel hundreds or even thousands of jobs. Are you kidding me? Calm down, Triple J. It's okay. It's okay. You know, we'll, we'll ask for cookies later on. <laughs> In addition to laying off staff, Microsoft closed some of its studios in, uh, entirely earlier this year, including Arcane Austin, Tango Gameworks, Roundhouse Games, and Alpha Dog Studios. Tango Gameworks was saved by PUBG Studio Crafton, but the others have closed for good. 2024, like 2023 before it, has been a brutal for layoffs in the video game developers and staff at Microsoft and many other companies. Some estimates suggest that there have been more than 11,000 layoffs in the video game sector in 2024 alone. A former PlayStation executive recently shared his thoughts on the cuts, claiming they are not due to corporate greed alone, but are instead part of general macroeconomic conditions. Ubisoft, Bungie, and many others have also implemented dramatic cuts in 2024. So let's look at the comments. <laughs> um, there's two, so I'm not even going to sort them. Because uh, I'll just, I'm going to read both of them anyway. Um, Adora Dahan goes, maybe sack the nonsense jobs and the ones who want to put identity politi politics first and game second. Simon the Kid 7 goes, my thoughts go out to the human resources department and marketing team, especially the invaluable communications team who contribute with so much important content every day and really are the core and essence of game development. They are truly the unsung heroes of the Xbox Game Studios department. It is with a heavy mind I write these words. Your contribution shall not be forgotten. You communicated so much and wrote so many fancy sentences and difficult words when all the other ones made all the games. You are giants. You are the essential and magnificent ones. So thank you very much. Xbox is not the same without you. Okay. Um, can I go first? Yeah, go ahead, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> okay, so I will try to calm down. Um, we we'll get some beer later on. It's okay. <laughs> Seven hours later. <laughs> um, but seriously, I mean, who buys something knowing their business is gonna, knowing they're gonna have to reduce staff? I thought the idea was to keep staff or employ more staff, not, not, not go through a merger or go through an, or go through an acquisition that's gonna call, that's gonna. Uh, that's gonna um, not go for do it with an acquisition that's gonna cause you to lay off thousands of people. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I know one layoff that would help Xbox. One layoff that would prob that would solve most, if not all, of Xbox's problems. I wonder which one. Phil Spencer, you're fired. <laughs> when that when that happens and he's kicked out of Xbox headquarters, probably for good, then Xbox has a chance to succeed. While he's running the ship. Xbox might as well call themselves the Titanic and just keep go and just keep going down and picking up more water as they go down, because I mean, Whereas he, Lita... knew, he, he knew he knew he was going to lay off all these people when he when he was going through it. No one knew that was going to happen. I mean, uh, uh, let's let's compare that to my business. You know what? I'm going to buy so much inventory that I have no money for anything else, even shipping out orders. <laughs> Phil Spencer's a genius. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, yeah, uh, I think Phil Spencer and any of his yes men that have been uh, telling him what he should do, they need to be fired. They need to be kicked out of Xbox. Xbox needs to be put in the hands of someone who actually cares about games and not just Game Pass. But that's 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 my opinion. You, what do you want to say? Now I see why Major Nelson left before ever they start to hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> He's been with the company for over 20 years, almost 25 years, David Janelson. Phil Spencer has been around since, the, what, at least since before uh, Xbox 360 era. Like he's been, he was a, wor a worker for uh, the Microsoft brand for a while. So, 
you know, these guys, well, he's specifically Major Nelson, that's why I guess he left and retired early, whatever the case is, you know, retired, quit, I don't know, but he left for a reason, now I see why. Because <laughs> that's how it is now for the last several, not years, but a good five years now, because this acquisition was, was $70 billion they acquired? So like over $70 billion. Yeah, I'm like... It, like $75.4 billion. Something like that, yeah, it's... uh. They they, they, they bit more, bit enough water to get chew, and um, I did say something about this back in last year during the time of the process of the acquisition. Whereas, like, it's going to be like a a risky move on um, Microsoft's part because if you're not putting the effort into remaking, remastering, or re-releasing games that are part of these brands of these sort of companies you acquired, whether it's as big as Activision Blizzard or as small as I don't know uh, the the makers of South of Midnight, I don't know, but regardless though it's like you know you had to put put some work into that you know into these these uh, matters you know you gotta get just, just buy off more than you get bite off more than you get chew and think that's all right it's i would tell the uh, phil spencer and uh the rest of our microsoft you know bill gates and all like it's uh if bill gates is listening to, to this matter uh bill gates stop worrying about the pandemic stop worrying about vaccines stop work work about my xbox please you know <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Like I think, I think the reason why um, Microsoft is not overseeing, having proper oversight with Xbox, really, is they focus too much on other things other than just you know vaccines and pandemics and new world order, the Great Reset, whatever these terms are that Bill Gates likes to pursue in, and they're not focused on the business aspect of their company. It sucks. Yeah. And now, and now they got someone who doesn't who who is reactive. You know, I mean, you know, when you're supposed to, like, when we heard that Activision Blizzard was being purchased, we thought, okay, there's a plan, obviously. They're not going to spend billion, they're not going to spend tens of billions of dollars, like they said, six, we thought it was 69.6 or something like that, and, but instead it was like 75.4 billion or whatever. We knew, okay, there's got to be a plan. You know, this isn't just Call of Duty, you know, this is, um, you know, they're going to, Obviously, have call. Obviously, Call of Duty is going to be one of the big marquee names. But obviously, look at all these all the game franchises that was coming over. And we got Call of Duty Three remake on Game Pass. Hmm. Wow! I'm glad that seventy five point four billion dollar acquisition went through. And it fixed like, the matter with the online capabilities of the of these older Call of Duty games because it's affected their bottom dollar and possible lawsuits, even though they fixed the bottom line of it all. Yeah, I mean, you don't... I mean, you don't... I mean, it's it's almost like someone buying, like, a huge collection of games and being like, this one game, who cares about the rest? I gotta list this one game. <laughs> and then wondering why you still lost money. Yep. And, this, and what's worse, what's worse, it's normally okay when it's just one guy that doesn't have any power. No, this guy's steering the ship. I think he's heading straight for the iceberg. <laughs> on purpose. On perp, yeah, on purpose. <laughs> yeah, Phil Spencer said, if I'm going to be forced to, to leave the company, I'll take the, the entire Xbox brand with me. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, Major Nelson, I, I hope, if you have money saved, maybe you can make, make a competitor to Xbox, because... Uh, you know, I worked for bosses that I knew had no idea what they were doing um, in the past. Slomans, for one. Uh, well, my <laughs> last boss at Slomans, anyway. Um, yeah, maybe Major Nelson, if you have games, if you have money saved, maybe you could start up your own business and just because I mean, Xbox is just there's 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 no logic behind their their uh, moves anymore. I mean, we've been wondering, you know, it's been over a year since the merge, it's been over a year or just about a year since the merger went through, and where are the, all these, ex where are all these games that they have the, the license to the IP to? Mm. Good question. They're not, on, they're not on Game Pass. They're not being remade. There's been no announcements about new uh, Tony Hawk games or, um, true crime games or anything like that and but wow I'm sure that 75.4 billion dollars went to good went to a good cause 
anything else to add, or I need to move on? It's a uh, it's a shame. It's it's it really is a daunting um uh, thing that um Xbox did with the acquisition and all and they're gonna put no effort into re- doing all these remasters and re releases that people wanted, gamers wanted specifically, especially. Then they're, they're not they're not listening to their core audience, they're not listening to um the everyday worker at Microsoft or Xbox brand to say. And I'm sure that most of the workers at the Xbox brand are gamers themselves, hopefully, because you know they should know what the what the people want. And I thought that the the acquisition of, of Microsoft, I mean uh, Microsoft's uh, acquisition of Blizzard, would would do would do just that. You know, listen to the audience and put the shit on the Game Pass, all the games like Call of Duty and all, and that's it. But yeah, now we it's thought, yeah. We thought a lot. We thought a lot of the Call of Duty games, and I'm talking about the good ones. The, when we were excited to Call of Duty, the original Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, the first Black Ops, Call of Duty Ghost, uh, stuff like that. We thought that was all going to be on Game Pass. Uh, Dr. Games 101, I think, was thinking of even games further back, like Call of Duty, the big red one, Call of Duty, um, World at War, Call of Duty, the Three. first Call um Yeah, so he was, think, uh, he was thinking of like uh, those games even, and it's like neither happened. Or that the, I, or, I wish I, I wish I had the money to buy Activision Blizzard because I would have, like I said, I would probably had Microsoft Teams off um, office meetings with all the studios, and been like, guys, I need your I need your reports on the IPs you own, the last game you made, and whether that game was made a profit or um, a, or was a loss. And then, like when I get those reports. I'll be I'll be speaking with you again later, and then I would have said, okay, this studio, I want you to work. I want you to bring this IP back. This studio, I want you to bring. You know, I want you to do this one. And like the studios that had no uh, profit, okay, maybe I would have cut those, but I would have at least had reports and numbers and data and had something to back it up, not shutting down a studio whose last game was a success. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, 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 get, I, I get fired up when talking about Phil Spencer because um, it's just like, you know, someone like me who, yeah, graduated high school, never graduated college, I could have done better in Phil Spencer's position than he, than he did. And I'm a five-time college dropout and, you know, I live with my family and all after all these years and I can still be eligible and able to work for these companies at, at some point. And myself. do better, and do better than the current management. Yeah, or at least be part of the supervisory team or something of sorts. You know. Yeah, I mean, we could have. I mean, like I like I said, that's what I would have done if I had the money and I could have purchased Activision Blizzard. I would have said, okay, you know, uh, a lot of you guys, um, I, you know, you're we're going to bring back a lot of the IPs that you still have the rights to. We just got to find out which ones are the most profitable. Yeah, and and you know I'm gonna put all you guys back to work, or mo- at least most of you. Um, unless unless you ha- unless you have a new idea, but again, you know this this is against uh, Phil Spencer's um, the one in power. Indeed. Anything else to add, or ready to move on? We can move on. All right. Yeah, I think we bashed Phil Spencer enough for this episode. Yeah, for the second time at least, if not more so. <laughs> well, if he's if if this is how he's going to act, he deserves it. <laughs> um, you know, if these are the decisions he's going to make, like I said, it's best if he steps down. <sighs> maybe so. Maybe, maybe 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 kick out Phil Spencer and bring Major Nelson back. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that'll be the day. Anyway, PlayStation Plus game catalog editions for September 2024 available now. The Plucky Squire, Far Cry 5, and more. The full lineup of PlayStation Plus game catalog editions for September 2024 are now available with one small exception. Uh, The Plucky Squire, as it only launches today, September 17th, won't be available until 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, 5 p.m. UK. All other games, however, which you can view below, are now available to play for anyone with the corresponding PlayStation Plus subscription. Sony has revealed the full lineup of PlayStation Plus games catalog editions for September 2024, which include the Plucky Squire, Far Cry 5, and more. 
Announced on the PlayStation blog, a total of 13 games are joining the library. Nine on the PlayStation Plus Extra tier, and four on the PlayStation Plus Premium tier through the Classic Games catalog and PSVR 2 offerings. They're available September 17th. September perhaps doesn't have as many heavy hitters as last month, which includes The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, uh, Wild Hearts, Ride 5, Watch Dogs 2, Out of the Lamb, and more. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through the list. I'm just going to go through, um, uh, through the paragraphs because they're going to go over each game individually anyway. Uh, the Plucky Squire is certainly the headline game month this month as it launches straight onto PlayStation Plus, letting players explore its blend of 2D and 3D gameplay elements. The Plucky Squire follows the magical adventures of Jot and his companion storybook characters who discover a three-dimensional world outside the pages of their book, reads the official syn synopsis. Under the Waves is a narrative-driven adventure game about grief set in the North Sea in a techno-futuristic 1970s. Players are offered the chance to not just explore a deep and dark surreal underwater landscape, but also the very depths of the human psyche. Adventure and exploration game Night in the Woods is up next, letting PS Plus users who haven't already experienced this 2017 game, Night in the Woods exploration of young adulthood manages to be charming, funny, and devastatingly sad all at once, IGN said in our 8 out of 10 review. Very different, Kermo Blight is promised to be a science fiction survival horror experience, mixing the free exploration of its disturbing world with challenging combat, unique crafting, and non-linear storytelling. It was released in 2021 and has a sequel on the way. The football version of NBA Playground arrived in 2023 as Wild Card Football. Its developer, Saber Active, said it takes the fun and excitement of a football over the top with exciting arcade action and features a massive roster of hundreds of real-life football players with detailed player models and animations. One for science fiction and grafting fans, Space Engineers is a sandbox game about engineering, construction, and the maintenance of space works. It was announced a decade ago, but only arrived in 2019, and joined PlayStation Plus rival Xbox Game Pass in February 2024. Looking to be as wild and wacky as some road trips, as some, as some real road trips, Row 96 lets players travel through a procedurally generated adventure again and again. Road 96 is a fascinating and frequently tense adventure that manages to keep its story on track despite the odd bump in the road, IGN said in an 8 out of 10 review. Uh, players may be able to complete Ben 10 faster than they can say, it's hero time, but that doesn't mean it won't be a lot of fun, right? As Ben Tennyson, it's up to you to save the world, reads the synopsis. Take on some of Ben's most infamous enemies, including Zambozo, Queen Bee, and the Weatherheads. The penultimate for now entry in Ubisoft's open-world first-person shooter series, Far Cry 5 takes players to the deep south of the U.S. as they look to escape from and destroy a doomsday cult attempting to take over the entire country. It also earned an 8 out of 10 in IGN's review. Far Cry 5 is another wide-open playground with all the necessary ingredients for causing a real ruckus, loads of enemies and allies, temperamental wildfire, and plenty of explosions is September's virtual reality game as it gives PSVR 2 users an action-packed rhythm game defended with the blended with the first-person shooter genre. Pistol Whip is a VR highlight with fast-paced rhythm shooting, an exciting soundtrack, and an enticingly abstract uh, art style, IGN said in another 8 out of 10 review. Did you know Clank of Ratchet and Clank fame had a secret agent alter ego? No? I guess that's the point. Secret Agent Clank is a PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable game from 2008, making its way to the PlayStation Plus Classic Games catalog. IGN 6 out of 10 review said we don't hate the game, but are just disappointed in it. Sky Gunner is a third-person combat fight flight simulator from 2000, originally released on the PlayStation 2. It's now been enhanced with up rendering rewind, quick save, and custom video filters. However, clearing the runway for takeoff in the modern era. Through, though perhaps not as quite as iconic as Crash Bandicoot or Spyro the Dragon, Mr. Mosquito still pulled in a decent review. It's a little short and about $10 more than we'd have cared to pay for it, and it has a few camera and control problems, but the game's 
creative premise, its brave uh, completion, and the phenomenal amount of laughter and fun to be had here shouldn't be ignored, IGN said in 2002. So let's look at the comments, and then um, I'll ask if you have any uh, thoughts about any of these games. So best, okay. All right. Um, I I B text goes excited to play the Plucky Squirrel and Road ninety six is a game I've been wanting to try for quite a while so that was a nice surprise. Uh, Gold Tennis Saroy goes I'm still waiting for that surprise Breath of Fire three and four and Alundra re release on PlayStation Premium. I live in a dream world. And Fandango Brandango sixty eight goes played Alundra on PC for the first time a couple months ago but probably don't give it long enough to get into it. So, um, are you interested in any of these games that I mentioned? Uh, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and Watch Dogs 2, I've always wanted to play. I actually have a copy of Watch Dogs 2, Watch Dogs 1, and I think also the third one, I'm not sure yet. But after the first two Watch Dogs, I actually have a copy of the, the games. And, man, the last time I played the first Watch Dogs, at least a couple years ago right now, I did a gameplay of it on YouTube for, for a few minutes. Uh, so it wasn't so bad of experience. Um, other than that, you know, other the other games you mentioned, I'm not really sure about, per se. I never really played them. I never even heard of them, maybe. Not all of them, but some of them. I think I heard at least once before. So, if I had a PS4, and one day I may have to get a PS4 rather than a PS5, I'll definitely get get those type, kind of games to try them out, of course. So other, I'm just looking at the uh, systems that these games are available on. The only one that's exclusive to PS5 is the Plucky Squire. Okay. Uh, everything else is PS4 or PS4 and PS5, right. except for, except for Pistol Whip, which is PS VR game. Okay. So that's uh, just another point why PS5 is barely worth it. Right, right. Because ninety percent of the games are still on PS4. Hmm. Um, but uh, Watch Dogs One, it's awesome. Watch Dogs One, if you haven't played it, it's definitely worth playing all the way through. Watch Dogs 2, um, I got into, I did play about an hour of it, maybe a little more, when uh, through Game Pass, and uh, Watch Dogs 2, I enjoyed what, what little I played of it before my Game Pass subscription uh, um, expired. Mm -hmm. um, as for these games, I do have a few, uh, a couple. Road 96 I played. Um, and it's if you like story give um, if you like games you know uh, that have a story and like uh, you know even though you're trying to escape the same um, draconian city um, and make it to freedom uh, just because you did it the first time didn't mean I succeeded the second and third time so even uh, but like it's but you like you do play as different people trying to escape and then like when one person's story ends you play as someone else who's trying to get out of the city and um, it's supposed to have five different stories but they really do the stories do really go in branching paths so I definitely recommend Road 96 if you like story based games like I'd say Life is Strange then Road 96 is definitely something Far Cry 5 I can't I don't think I actually played Far Cry 5 I think I played Far Cry 6 so Far Cry 5 I really can't comment on Ben 10 um, I never pl I haven't played this one but Ben 10 games, um, if you like the character Ben 10 and you like that uh, cartoon series or whatever the franchise is as a video game, um, if you like ben, the Ben 10 series, you'll probably like this one too. Um, that's yeah, all I can really say. Good. That, that's all I can really say about it. Um, yeah, the TV series is great, Ben 10, in my opinion. Especially when I was a kid, I watched it 20 years ago. Yeah, so, I mean, these are the games if I, so, um, yeah, so, uh, the others I never even heard of until tonight. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add or ready to move on? Let's move on, please. Okay. Power World won't switch over to live service model. Developer Pocket Paint. Pocket Pair assures fans that Power World isn't transitioning to live service, but microtransactions may be coming. 
Power World has taken one of the biggest gaming act success stories of 2024, but fans of the game were upset by a recently published interview which suggested that developer Pocket Pair was considering a switch to a live service model. However, Pocket Pair quickly released a follow-up statement which denied that change while hinting at the possibility of adding microtransactions to the game at a later time. Pocket Pair's official um, X account for Power World dropped a lengthy message which assured the fans that the interview in question was conducted months earlier. While discussions remain ongoing, the statement assured fans that the um, F2P GAAS approach is not suitable for us. Power World was never designed with that model in mind, and it would require too much work to adapt that game at this point, continued Pocket Pair. Additionally, we are very aware that that this just isn't what our players want, and we always put our players first. Thank you. This is what you're supposed to do as a game developer. Phil Spencer. <laughs> and as a game publisher. Regarding the future of the game, Pocket Pair's post did say that the company is still considering skins and DLC for Power World in future as a means to support development, but the developer promised to maintain its open dialogue with fans about the future of Power World. Power World is available on PC, Xbox One, and Xbox Series. Gee, I wonder why Power World is so successful. What a mystery. Uh, so what do you think of this um, saying it's not going to become live service, but... Thank the uh, fuck Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, mean it's, it's, I don't mind live services to some games, not all games, though, especially in the current day and all with all the things they're trying to do with most customers, most gamers of ours. Because, yes, F, the first three um, ma mainstream live service games... Fortnite, Apex Legends, and PUBG. Those are like the top tier three, the tier S model type of uh, um, live service games, in my opinion. All well and good. You know, different audiences, different age bracket, different demographics, you name it. So it's kind of like it balances itself out between these three. And I, I'm more of the Apex Legends crowd, I will admit that. You get some of my gaming activity, I spent 250 days of gameplay on that game. So. Yeah, <laughs> but as far as like other games is concerned, like the Pal World is concerned, let let it be. I haven't had just to play Pal World yet, and I had it on Game Pass last month or so, so I didn't get a chance to, to play it yet. But what I do get a chance to get more um, um Microsoft, what's called the uh, Xbox Ultimate, I'll definitely will play that and do a gameplay of it on my YouTube account. You now more power to me for uh, that matter. So. Yeah, Pal World. I mean, uh, it, it was based on word of mouth mainly, and then it reached about how many millions of players on not millions of players, but good a million to people playing on Steam charts on a regular basis. It's it's a it's just great, you know, great a great sale, you know, and it's, it's part of the Game Pass uh, Day One Pass at one point uh, for those who are members of it. So on on the Xbox that is, so it's um. Uh, yeah, it's uh, leave it at leave it alone, please, for, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, I don't count microtransactions and DLC as the same thing. I do count it as different, um, because true, you're paying for more content, but DLC is content that's worth it. Yeah, uh, microtransactions can be something that's like a dollar or two, um, but the problem is they want you to buy hundreds of microtransactions um, for things that are usually worthless. Oh, yeah. uh, but DLC could always be like extra characters, extra stories, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, the D so um, if yeah the um, it's a good thing that Power World is going to continue listening to its fans. That's obviously the most important. Um, I don't know why we can't get a, a certain game company to or console developer to uh, do that. Um, or certain console developers, because it's not like Sony's uh, doing that seven hundred dollar PS Five Pro. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so it's a shame we can't get the console developers to listen. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, my hats off to Power World. You know, at least they're, at least at least they're doing right. They're they're doing what a lot of game developers and publishers should be doing. Oh yeah. Um, and if they and if 
the other game developers and companies were following the example of Power World, um, how how they how to treat its customers. Maybe the gaming industry today wouldn't be in such a shit show. Yeah, especially especially the fact that it's all about um, the short term gain, not about the long term approach of the franchise or the IPs altogether. That's why you see these um, non gaming um, entities or non gaming officials and. And businessmen like Kathleen Kennedy of Star Wars, or uh, who's it called? Uh, that that black lady, that's the president of X, of the Xbox brand and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, you know, these these people who would never play a game a day in their lives, and if they did, then it's very short of the matter. Don't see the long term approach of of extendable extending the game's lifespan to the best of their yeah. ability. Well, they, they they want to extend the game's lifespan, but they don't know how. Or they think about the quick bucks, not about the uh, longevity, longevity of the game. Well, they think. Well, they, everyone thinks, "Ooh, live service! That'll that'll make it. That'll that'll uh, make it long. Um, to give the game a long lifespan. No, it won't. Mm-hmm. Not not just because it's a live service. Oh yeah. Um, anything else, Dad? Or ready to move on for the final story for tonight? Oh, the final story is gonna be a a, a bitch in the hell. Yep. <laughs> I'm so ready. you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Next. New report says Concord costs four hundred million dollars to make. Okay, I do have a question. How much did it would it have cost? How much less would it have cost if you didn't hire hookers and blow and have all that stuff <laughs> in the board? <laughs> Best for everyone, especially for everyone. <laughs> it seemed obvious that Sony was going to take a huge loss on Concord, given its high cost, immediately disastrous player count, and unprecedented shutdown. But it may be worse, e- even worse than everyone thought. A new report from Sacred Symbols, Colin Moriarty, citing a source that worked on Concord, claims that the game had a higher budget than anyone envisioned. A full $400 million broken up into two halves of development. You catch this video below, but I'll have a summary beneath that. So we'll just watch the summary or read the summary. Um, like I said, how much blow did they have in the boardrooms? How much? How many hookers did they have? How many? How long were they paying the hookers? Were they paying them by the hour? Um, how do How do you spend four hundred million dollars to make a game? Don't forget the KY Jelly. <laughs> Don't forget Grand Theft Auto Five. At the most expensive, was two hundred fifty million dollars to make. Oh yeah. So how do you? How? I'm 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 telling you, it was some drug orgy binge. <laughs> what I, happened? I think Mark Zuckerberg was invited to that party, and he just gave everyone like everything at that moment. <laughs> Before the game hit alpha state, they'd already spent two hundred million dollars on it. Unclear how much from original owners, investor, and how much is from Sony. <laughs> After that, from the 2021 to the 2024 launch, Sony spent another $200 million on it. The game was in a laughable shape when it was shown in the alpha state, so Sony felt like they needed to spend that much to get it to minimal viable product status. Maybe you should have spent the other $200 million, the first half of it, more responsibly. Again, we're talking about money that could have that, uh, that doubles the high end of Grand Theft Auto V's budget. Oh, yeah. A major expense was needing to cut outsource much of the game to other studios. In quarter one 2023, some aspects of the game had not been worked, in, uh, worked on at all, like onboarding and monetization. I'd say this may explain the price and no battle passes more than some conscious noble decision to change the model. Also, how bad the earned cosmetics were. Ongoing cost to maintain game would be additional millions a month. Concord is the biggest budget game Sony has ever released, the biggest loss they've ever taken. There are other games being worked on at Sony that cost more than this. That cost more? That cost more than this, but in terms of what's already out, this is the largest. It's a total loss. Why did it happen? Concord was said to be the future of PlayStation. They said it was a Star Wars-like project. There were big multimedia plans between the cinematics and inclusion and things like Amazon's secret level. There was a culture of toxic positivity vibe where you could not say anything negative internally about the game. Character designs, etc. No one was allowed to meaningfully change the course of the game. 
This was CEO of Sony Interactive, Herman Holt's baby, who was a massive champion of the game. Some of this still seems so strange, budget aside, as given AAA bloat these days. I can believe that. But how do you look at a game in a laughable state in Alpha two years ago, scramble to outsource work to get it finished, and still believe it's the future of PlayStation and a potential Star Wars-like property? Star Wars comparisons are always a tall order. We heard that said about the goal Bungie's Destiny back in the day. But Destiny succeeded and has lasted for ten years. Concord lasted two weeks. I guess this is the toxic positivity which has been confirmed by other sources, where even if that sounds ridiculous, you can't say that, especially if this was a game cradled by the entire head of Sony Interactive. I'd argue putting this much faith in a game that bad is almost fully disqualifying for that wall. The head of Firewalk has already stepped down, and it seems close to impossible um, close to impossible the team survives, either dissolved into other studios or shut down entirely. This is arguably the biggest video game disaster in history by financial loss, and there needs to be someone held responsible. It should not be the rank and file workers in this situation. So is so there's no comments. Um, so what do you think of Concord debacle. Well, I have to say, at first I was like, okay, hundred million dollars was lost. Obviously, no big, not no big deal. But it's like it's a hefty penny to be spent, to be risking it. But now four hundred million, that's just that's the that's one of the biggest budgets of any game I've ever heard of in my life as a game a viewer, as a gamer slash consumer, because. The last, like you said, well, GTA Five, it was like two hundred fifty million to make back in twenty thirteen. The, the, on the high end, there there were um, GTA. Not to interrupt, I just wanted to give you uh, more clarity from what I've heard. Okay. Um, GTA Five on the low end, it was one hundred sixty five million dollars to make. On the high end, it was two hundred fifty million. So it was somewhere in there. Right, of course. I was just taking two hundred fifty million because that was the highest. Uh, Mount, I heard that it costs to make Grand Theft Auto Five. Okay, but yeah, my Go friend, on. it's uh, it's 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 a, it's a hindrance now to Sony because you can't make that shit up anymore with that kind of money anymore in in today's world anymore for Sony. That is, I mean that like like four hundred million dollars. That's that's a lot of money to be wasted. I'm very surprised there's no guy killed over this shit and going Agent Forty Seven or any or any major player, or any major worker, or whatever. Because, you know, so, some heads got to roll at this rate, you know, from all that loss. I guarantee myself, I'm, uh, if I was, like, a head of any gaming company, and I saw Forge Million Dollars wasted on one risky IP that looks very, like, copy, carbon copy and all, I would probably want to get someone, you know, get someone prosecuted for this thievery, you know? Fraud, or even to call it. You know, others where I want to go age of 47, but that's not my approach every 24-7 all times, but, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> But on a serious note, though, um, it's, uh, yeah, like $400 million. God damn, that's a lot of money to be spent on one IP of, like, Concord. I understand, like, Mario or Zelda, you know, for the, to try to make it change the, 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 the state of the game playing, like they did with Halo 5 and all, back for the Halo franchise, or even Halo Infinite, where they spent about $500 million, or what was it $50 million, $500 million, something? It was something like that. It was crazy amount of money that, that of Halo Infinite was wasted on that game. But Concord, this is like a a new IP altogether. And Sony, I, I hear that Sony was willing to risk it all for the Concord. It was that crazy of them to think like that. It's unfathomable that we spend the kind of money on one franchise that's unknown to most people. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, we get, we, now, and this also brings up something else. Uh, game publishers say, well, games cost so much more to make. Well, okay, start spending that money more efficiently. Yep. You know, maybe game maybe game publishers bonuses or exec, games publishers executive bosses uh their bonuses should not be uh so guaranteed. It should be it should be conditioned on the on the success of the game. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would actually free up some money. Maybe um you know, and maybe you should actually spend the money on making the game because like I said, you cannot convince me 400 million dollars was made to make um Four hundred dollar million dollars was made to make Concord. I'm sorry, I don't buy that. 
It's whether um, it was Batman or Sonic or something. I can't understand that matter to make it very risky taking more. But know? not even because, I mean, uh, you know, if you got to make games smaller and then, like, add, like, DLC episodes and stuff, I'd rather that than, than game publishers going, well, games cost so much more to make today. Yeah. No, uh, game co- games cost so much more to make today because you have no idea who knows how to, to run a business ledger. That's why games cost so much more to make. Uh, you uh, you have games in a laughable state after you spent two hundred million dollars on it. How do you blow through a Grand Theft Auto Five type type of budget and and your games in a laughable state? And it's not even a well mentioned title or then. IP. Yeah, but yeah. So I mean, I don't ever want to hear a publisher ever again say, "Well, games cost so much more to make. Well, maybe you should be spending that money more responsibly." <laughs> Damn straight, yeah. It's uh, I mean, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I understand that you want to like you know avoid conflict as much as possible by spending more money, but that's not the case in in in, this, in these times of uh hard times as in this economy, especially because you're competing with uh, every gamer's wallet as well as their attention to the to your game as well too. So I mean, games like Apex Legends and Fortnite going up against you got the. Yeah, I make sure that to make sure that that game Concord is the best it can be, and obviously they didn't put that kind of effort in like that. It was not really their suitable interest to think about the long term of gaming. They think about the the short term. They make like five hundred billion dollars, whatever the case is, to Concord. And that's about it. Not about the longevity. Not about creativity and consistency of the of that creati- creativity. So. Yeah, so and the Concord okay. was forty bucks to, to spend too. It wasn't for free to play like Apex or Fortnite. Stupid yeah. on them too. Yeah, no one was gonna spend. I didn't even see. And you want to talk about spending money on a game to make a game? I don't remember any promotion about Concord. Mm-hmm. Unless you watch it, the trailers from like two months ago during the, the uh, summer season. But I'm saying, like, you know, there were commercial. You know, there were no commercials. So people who missed those trailers. They yeah. were they were never gonna know about Concord until it became the flop that it did. Yeah, they they did put a lot of marketing into it though. though. That's the thing that screwed up on their part. They said they put marketing that kind of marketing into that game. That's yeah. another bloat too in that matter. Yeah. So like I said, uh, Concord. I never want to hear publishers say a game costs too much to make because if you can spend four hundred million dollars on that and that be the end result, then there's something wrong with your spending. Not with, uh, not with people not willing to pay enough. Yeah, when's bad Ben Affleck in the movie The Accountant when you need him? Because you know that movie showed a lot about of, of a and the, the actual accountant trying to help out the the cartel and shit like that and killing a few people at the same time doing the numbers in your head. I'm like, you know, we need something like that in our fucking <laughs> industry now because <laughs> it to cleanse the system because what's going on here? I, I see, I can see that the accountant um doing a sniper shot on like you know goodness knows who at this rate because good movie and all but damn it's going to happen in fruition at this rate <laughs> yeah yeah that's a lot of money right there I, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm baffled still or overzealous of the of that four hundred million dollar um uh, situation it's just that I can't I that's a lot of money to be dealing with and I don't want to be a part of that shit and that I think start to sink that's that's what I don't understand about these these uh major players they think like oh let's give Concord to a small or um studio well it's not that small students begin with they've been around for what for a few years or whatever they dedicated eight years to that game specifically that's how screwed up this this situation is you know yeah uh so i mean and the thing is you, you really i mean because i like i said i i really can't even figure out where the game went the game had fictional characters so there was no uh people that you were paying to use their likeness so it's not like the game went to a huge roster of characters because all the characters were made up yep again where did this where did that money go <laughs> I'm telling you, I would not be surprised if the if the conference rooms of when it came to these games were full bloating were full of bloating strippers, yeah, and I prostitutes. I can and, see, and everything. 
I can sense that movie Matator with uh, Pierce Brosnan in it, where that scene in the beginning of the movie where he used the uh, car to blow up with his device and all. I can't imagine if they're going to do something like this in real life with these, some of these, one of these uh, major players involved, because uh, you know, something's got to give with this type of, uh, not movement, but the type of action acquired to, 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 to fix the system internally, at least best that, you know? Yeah, and these are the games that they want people to pay more than $70 for. <laughs> Keep in mind, these $70. are the games that developers, that publishers want, ooh, saying customers should pay $80, $90, $100, or even more for these, for these games. Or pay both per bullet or some shit like that here yeah. for that one, uh, that one official. I forgot his name, though. But, yeah, he talked about saying like, he wants to sell each um, customer, each bullet or whatever per cent or whatever the case is. Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine Grand Theft Auto. Imagine playing Grand Theft Auto three back in the day, and you go to ammunition, and you want to buy, you know, more guns, more ammo, and then you have to put, and then you have to like, uh, put the charges on a real life debit card. <laughs> yeah, especially if it's your, if it's a, if it's a, a parent's debit card to some child, I'm like, mommy, mommy, I want to buy one hundred bullets for about five bucks per per order, please, please. You know, and then, okay, dear, you can put five bucks down, and all of a sudden, your your son charges like a hundred dollars for like a thousand bullets or whatever. Yeah, or shit like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's even a bigger can of worms because, and you can't blame little kids because they don't know, you know, the value of money because they're little. But at the same time, you also shouldn't have the card access act so accessible on a game console. And they teach these kids too the money in school because we were in school. We were at the kindergarten into the first, second, third grade. They taught us about how to how to handle money and all. It's just that they ever teach these kids about the power and handling of money and all. It's you know, it's not just the parents' fault at the same time, but it's like you know, the game industry, the parents' um, uh, oversight of these uh, young gamers and all. It, it's a one big kerfuffle to a point that you know it's going to collapse eventually. And this game, this game collapse is called or the the. Um, what's it called? The the collapse of the game industry, like there was in nineteen eighties and all before the Nintendo yeah. came around. You know, it's gonna it's gonna happen like that one day. Since so this decade, in my opinion, I think it's gonna happen, but I think it's gonna be mostly major triple A studios. Right. I think I think single A. I think like independent game developers will be fine. I think even some like double A game studios will be fine. It's basically the triple A th studios that think they can do no wrong, including Ubisoft in their quadruple A game. How'd that, oh, yeah. how'd that work out? Oh yeah. That, I think, I think, I think we might be headed towards another video game crash, but that's gonna, it's gonna be not all games like in 1983. It's gonna be the triple A names that everyone knows. Oh yeah. Because people are gonna be like, Ubisoft can't do it anymore. EA can't do it anymore. Um, Sony can't do it anymore. Microsoft can't do it anymore. Sony's not making games. Microsoft can't do it anymore. Why am I still buying games? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Support support independent small small studios that make good games. That's our that's our rate. That's our current day current trend we should do right now. Yeah. Um. So like I said, I don't it. If there is another video game crash, which I'm actually more open to the idea that actually might be a good thing, mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be the big developers that should know better. And when I say should know better, I'm talking about the executives at these studios. The executives that should know better, but don't do better. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, anything else to add? Or, ready, or is that um, ready to close it up for tonight? We can sum up the matter. No problem. I'm ready to move on. All right, well, that was the last story for tonight. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. This was episode 107 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. Uh, Triple J, um, Triple J, uh, Dr. Games 101, do you have any plans for tomorrow? Uh, not, like, as, as always, not tomorrow specifically. Maybe, maybe. But I can see doing more Cyberpunk 2077 game, game playing. Uh, but I plan on trying to do a uh, an actual gameplay of Return. It's called. I'm trying to fit, set up my a laptop for the recording of that particular session because my computer currently, my PC, my desktop PC is currently like croaked. I extracted the data of of the SSD, the SSD drive from the computer to recover it later on. So it's going to be at least a few months uh, later. I have to 
wait for a better PC uh, to come in and then I'll do, resume the proper gameplay of um, online gameplay with you guys if I can. If not, then I'll sit with my laptop to play with you guys, just do small sessions of gameplay because it's a, it's a very limited featured laptop. So, Okay. Um, I do have uh, I do have Batman the Brave and the Bold that came yesterday um, for the okay. Wii, so I'm probably going to be starting over in that game uh, to play it on stream sometime Sunday. Um, I did get some NES games for the store. I got uh, that live today. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to be doing, if anything, I'm probably going to be doing a stream of Batman the Brave and the Bold for the Wii tomorrow on my Wii U. I just got to right. get batteries for my Wii modes. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. Follow us if you follow me if you did. Um, also check out our YouTube channels. And until next time, which is let's see when what episode what date episode one hundred eight will be on. That'll be October fifth. Mm -hmm. So until next time, good night, everyone. Later, guys. <laughs>